Hey guys, welcome back to the Indie Wrestling Corner with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the queen of the indies and today i'm really excited this is a podcast that i've been dying to do for a while we got the limitless champion the prize alec price look at that it's dripping on the <laughs> neck <laughs> yo what's good what's good thank you for having me on absolutely i'm so excited to have you on uh guys if you're new here on the under the rope series here i interview everything independent wrestling whether it's wrestlers promoters referees behind the scenes i got you covered if you guys got any questions for alec i'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer any of them so drop them into the chat so uh yeah so we're gonna start this 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 interview off this is like how i like to start off my interviews out for the people that are not like you know maybe not know you but like how did you get into professional wrestling because you've had like a crazy 2021 so <laughs> um i've always liked professional wrestling i have uh early memories of me with my nana uh you know sitting in front of the tv watching wrestling she was like the other person in my family that loved wrestling as much as I did. And um, I've always liked it. You know, my brothers liked it too, but then they kind of weaned off. And then I went to public school where, like, not a lot of people liked it. So I didn't have anybody else that shared that, like, love of wrestling with. And then um, I met my friend Eddie. And then, you know, he had all the toys, the belts, everything. And um, I started, you know, hanging with him. We found, like, I found my passion for it again. I did like a year of backyard with my friends, not like backyard wrestling where we go try to get on shows like backyard, like we're in my boy's grandma's backyard, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, and then after that, I kind of like, after almost taking a dangerous move, I was like, I want to do this and learn how to do this and like actually do this. So if I get injured or messed up, I can just, you know what I mean? Be like, all right, I got messed up actually doing it and not being in a backyard. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and then I started training at the Bell Time Club about five years, five years ago in February, and with my uh, head trainer Bo Douglas and Benny Jooks, and I, you know I fell in love with it ever since. Like I love wrestling. Wrestling is like everything to me. It legit saved me. So, like I want, I want to give everything for this business. Oh, that's so that's so amazing to hear. Oh man, I love it. I, like I always talk about the independent scene that it's so special. Um, and I, me personally, like, I love it better more than the mainstream. And I find mm -hmm. gems in it. And you're definitely one of the gems, uh, for me. I know I told you off air that, uh, actually John Alba is kind of like how I found you, uh, with Limitless because the promotion, uh, doesn't exist anymore. And he reached out to me and he told me that he knew that I would like Limitless. And that's how I started watching Limitless. And it's been a bucket list for me to come live, watch it live. So I'll be there for New Year's. You should, you got to. I will be there. I will, I'm coming, I will be there. So I'm really looking forward to that. Wrestle well, Festival, me versus JD Drake. It's about oh to be a bag. Oh my God, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, let me give some love in the chat. I see all you guys. Mark Leslie, he goes, I'm here for the accent. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> you're, what's up? Uh, Marco says, Price City Hooligans versus the Kirks 2022. Oh, okay. I I'm I'm with that. If they want, if they if the Kirks want the hands, they can get the hands. Me and Beck can give anybody the hands. You know what I mean? Ooh, I'm You're with ride it. and die. That's it. Ooh, I'm with it. Uh, let's see what else. Johnny, what's up? Wilbert, how are you? Johnny says Alec was beating Matt Tavin in Beyond. Your biggest win so far in your Beyond career. Um, I think I've had you know pretty big wins. I mean, it was a huge win. Matt Taven's such a good wrestler. We had a, we had a, you know what I mean? Like it was a great time. Like I learned definitely a lot from Taven, and we just put on a banger. So I really liked it. I think I've had a couple big wins in Beyond because I've beaten a lot of the people that were the OGs of Beyond, right. like Chris or RSP or like Matt Taven too. So I think I've had a couple big wins right now. Even beating Blake Christian, that was a huge win. Yeah. 
Oh. Um, yeah, so. Oh, well, we'll get into that because that was like one of my questions that I was going to go deeper into. Uh, Wes is in the chat. He goes, hey, everyone, my son Kyle, let me say hi to the man, Alec. Uh, Cody's in the chat from NFW. What's up? Love all you We're guys. Good. <laughs> you guys are awesome. So, you know, it's funny. Cody's in the chat, and I was going to bring this up because I was really excited because you – and Dylan McKay were supposed to wrestle at NFW. And this was the match that I was looking forward to the most. So I need this, you know, to happen because I'm going to be screaming my brains off for this match with you <laughs> too. Like, it needs to happen. Uh, Cody said it's going to happen. So, I'm like, down. you have to go back over there because I need to sponsor this match because I love you both, like, dearly. And this needs to happen. I'm down, <laughs> so. I'm down for a match. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dylan wants it. You can come grab it. Yeah, come get it. Yes. Like, I love it. I love it. Okay. So I also like axing again. I know you. I've seen a bunch of your matches. I just saw you live, which we'll, we'll get into a little later. Um, but for that fan out there that's tuning into this podcast that never seen you wrestle before, what is mm -hmm. probably the one you would recommend for them to go check it out after this podcast? Uh, me versus Anthony Green for the Limitless Wrestling Championship. Yeah. yeah. It's a great a great and down yeah i think like the whole mat i cried after so if you want to see a real genuine ugly alec price crying face i would go to that match <laughs> because after i was bawling my eyes out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was gonna be like my next uh, question that I was gonna go into. So, which which is so great, Anthony Green. He's back in the Indies. I love him. Uh, you know, and this you know this championship belt that's around your neck. I mean, let's talk about it. It's like the prestige of this belt. I mean, I want to know what it means to you that you've had some of the best people like hold this belt in Limitless. You know, uh, Anthony Green, MJF, uh, Kristen Casanova, Danny Garcia, like. And a lot of these names have been signed. So, like, what are your thoughts, like, with this prestige of this um, belt? No cap, I'm honored to have the Limitless belt. Like, this is this isn't this isn't just like a title. This is like an establishment. Like, for a while, I've been saying Limitless is my hood that I've like helped keep Limitless on track. But without this belt, then it's I wouldn't. I have nothing to prove. You know what I mean? Like, I've been working my butt off, and this is, like, just all my hard work and dedication. Like, being like, here you go. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, it's just, it's, it's gratifying. And, like, I know everybody's gone signed off this belt, but I want to make this belt, like, the most prestigious belt on the indies. I want this belt to be known by everybody across the world. Like, I love this belt so much that it doesn't matter where I am. I'm going to be a fighting champion. I'm going to defend it in Limitless or in another promotion. Cause like I just, it this just means the world to me. Like I said, I I cried when I got when I won this. Like yeah, it's just it's just that good. It's yeah. the limitless it's the limitless wrestling world championship, an actual world championship. Yeah, this gold, real G's got gold, and you're seeing me with it because I'm a real G, and this belt ain't leaving my crossbody anytime soon you feel me good good it needs to stay there uh let me let me give some more love in the chat you guys are great like i mean you guys are amazing uh prince is in chat he goes i just wanted to say seeing alec win the limitless championship was something to see and the same can be said about becca and alec and beyond uh mark mark says you might not be able to talk about this but is there anything you could talk about your tryout Talk about what? With the E. <laughs> okay. Like, like it, I had I had a, an amazing time going down there. It was a great experience. Learned a lot. Thank you for WWE for bringing me down. But I I don't know nothing. Like I, I ain't saying nothing. You feel me? Awesome. Uh, Matt Awesome's in the chat. How are you? He says hi. He goes as a fellow wrestler. What would you call your style of wrestling? Um. I think it's just my style. Like, <laughs> I like it, that. It's like it's 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 death wish. Like I, I don't know. Like, cause I'm a ballsy loud mouth with a death wish. Anytime I go in there, it's uh, it's weird. It's like cartoon, no cap. Like some my my trainer used to say, I look like a cartoon in the ring, like a living cartoon. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm always bouncing and like the way I the way I run and everything. So, I mean, if anybody else has a better name for my style than me, like please put it up. I think it should be like OG style. Or like maybe like cartoon style, maybe Death Wish style, because I don't care. 
I don't give a fuck. You feel me? So <laughs> if anybody has a better idea, a better like, just name. There you go. Hit me up, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, let's see. Eric in the chat says, was Alec disappointed he didn't get a one-on-one against Daniel Garcia for that title? Um, I was a little disappointed because I definitely wanted that one-on-one. Daniel's an amazing competitor, and um, I feel like me and him would have just had, like, hot fire in that ring. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I still was able to face somebody that I've never faced before either because I've never faced AG until that point. Mm -hmm. So, I I mean, I would have loved to face Daniel Garcia. I'm happy I got to face, you know, AG. I I don't know. Like, I was a little disappointed, but stuff happens. What are you going to do? Yeah. You got to just keep moving forward and, you know, just work, making sure you're good. Your shit's good. You know what I mean? I feel like also in the indies, you never know. Like, that possibility can still happen. You know, like, that's the great thing. And even with the people over at AEW, you, you never know, like. Yeah, you never know. You, like, you could, like, have something, like, maybe a storyline set up, and you just never know what's going to yeah. happen. Like, stuff happens. That's why a card's subject to change. Yeah. Uh, Chris says, Death Wish style, we're going with that. Uh, Matt also says, Brutal Cartoon G style. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I love it. Wait, wait, what was the last one? <laughs> brutal Cartoon G style. <laughs> I like that. I mean, I like both of them. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are nuts. Uh, Rob from Bob Culture Con- Podcast, he goes, who would you want to work on the indies that you haven't worked yet? And who would you want to work from TV now that there are so many opportunities? Ooh, there's a lot of people I want to work that just came back. Like, with this new, like, with the new release in and the indies, like, I definitely want to face... Uh, Alex Shelley for that IWTV championship. Mm, I want to get that match. I love Alex Shelley. I feel like that shit would be a banger. Oof. Let's go. Um, yeah, I think Alex Shelley. Like, mm. and what was the second question again? Uh, who would you like to work uh, like on TV? Oh, on TV, AJ Styles any day. Mm. Let's give me AJ. <laughs> I love it. Give it to <laughs> me. Johnny says he'd love to see you in AEW Dark. That'd be great. Too. Yeah, that would be dope. You know what I mean? I, I would have no problem going on to AEW. Okay. See, I'm like I selfish. You know. <laughs> I don't want anybody to go anywhere. I want to continue to watch everybody in the indies. That's that's you know that's me. So of course I want you guys to live your dreams and <laughs> yeah, stuff. But I want to yeah. I want to be a little I want to be a little selfish just just a little bit. <laughs> uh, I have a fan tweet from Ringside Rant. He goes, "How important has working with a guy like Anthony Green been on your career?" Um, I mean, I've known AG for a while now. Getting to work with him was really dope because, you know, he just came back from the East. So it was, you know, definitely like a good learning experience to pick up like new tricks of the trade and like just different ways to make moments and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I definitely want to work him again. AG, like he has a great mind for this business. It's, it's crazy. Like he can just tell you, you can give him a date and he'll tell you like, where a wrestling show happened or what happened on that day in wrestling news or like he has all like he he he, he gets it you know what i mean so it was it was amazing getting to work work him and hopefully we get to work again yeah i love this shit i love running back certain matches so it's it's really, really good i also want to talk about like i know like we're you know we're talking a lot about limitless and you've worked a lot of other promotions and we'll, we'll get into that but i want to also talk that you were really like the first one to defend the limitless championship outside of Limitless, and you went down to Houston, Texas for Premier Wrestling Federation, and you defended against Gabriel Sky. So um, that's kind of not true because no? MJF defended it in uh, the UK when he had his championship. Okay. Okay. But I mean, I was the first to defend it in Texas, though. There you go. <laughs> that's got you like cool as well, like to leave and go somewhere else and defend the championship. It's no, like I mean, honor. I'm a fighting champion. Mm-hmm. Like, this gold means everything to me, and I'm not going to, like, not give somebody an opportunity because I never had those opportunities. Yeah. I want to make sure, like, I can show that this belt belongs around my neck, and, like, it's not just the belt. It's the champion that makes the belt, and I want right. to make this belt everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I want, I want this to be as big as the NWA championship back in the day. I want this to be that title where it's, like, 
damn. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. everyone knows it. Everyone wants it. Everyone wants to go to Limbo. Like, it's a real world championship. Like, this was defended in another country. It was defended in the UK by MJF. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, and it's and it's it's heavy too. You feel me? Like, <laughs> I love this. I, I I love this, and this is not going nowhere, nowhere you, soon. You hear that, guys? Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> I'm just here for the accent. I just, I love it. It's just like, everybody always talks to me about my accent and like that thick Queens accent. So it's just like, I love hearing like your accent too. It's just, it's just the greatest. Uh, Wes says in the chat, who's the one guy you look up to in either the Indies, NXT or AEW? Um, I mean, I look up to my trainers. I would have to say probably like, uh, like Christian Carmelo Hayes. Like that's my boy. You know, he's just been putting on New England, you know, doing his thing. He's, you know, he, he belongs, he belongs in the E. Like, everything yeah. he's gotten in this business is because he's worked his ass off to get it, mm-hmm. and he deserves everything. And, um, you know, probably definitely, you know, I, I mean, he used to be AC Romero, but he's kind of been a slime recently. I don't know. I don't really fuck with him no more. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but... Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, JD Drake. JD Drake's my wrestling guy. Yeah. But he's about to get these hands in Worcester. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't wait. I can't, it's like and no better person for me to come see you up there. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to whoop him. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Like... I'm here for it, so I'll I'll be there. I'll de- I'll definitely be there. So mm-hmm. let's talk. Let's talk JCW. Okay, you made your debut, which was great, which was exciting for me. Um, and I'm glad it couldn't have been a better person for you to wrestle than Billy Starks. Uh, you guys had a great match. Um, yeah, you came for me in the beginning too. <laughs> you came at me. You told me how to pay you uh, to follow you on Twitter, pretty much. But uh, <laughs> I I I just. I was so excited to open up with, you know, this match. You guys had a banger of a match. Tell us a little bit about your experience with JCW, you know, working with Billy Starks. Give us give us a little intel. Um, I, I had a great time down there. You know, the locker room was dope. Everyone was professional. The the show went by like I mean, I don't mind if it's a long show or a short show, mm-hmm. but like the show the show just seemed to be running very smoothly mm-hmm. and the production's really good. Like the canvas and everything, like I, I, I love going down there. I would definitely be down to go down there again. And Billy, Billy's really good. Like, I, I knew she was really good walking into that match. Right. But like that match, just like we just killed it. We had a banger. Like she, you know, she should be signed too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I definitely want to get that. Like she's, I wrestle her any day of the week, no cap. Ooh, I'm ready. Like, let's 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 run it back again. You know, uh, yeah, you know, it's no. funny. I know I know Rob brought this up in the chat. He was talking about you know like who would you like to wrestle, but you know I'm gonna go a little deeper into that because of the fact that it's like I mean you're young. You know, Billy Starks is is young. Like these kids are getting younger and younger and younger. It's scary to me. Like Billy yeah, Starks. Yeah, but she's younger than me though. Yeah, she's 17. Uh, and then you have like Nick Wayne, who's like 16. Like so. You know, maybe we manifest a match here. Like, is there any of that young, new, upcoming talent that has caught your eye that you need to get into the ring with? Uh, I feel like me and Martha, Marcus Mathers would have a banger. Ugh. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my shit. He, like, called all my H2O kids over there between Dylan and, and Marcus Mathers. I'm with it. Let's go. Yeah, Marcus would probably, like, I definitely want to get with Marcus. I feel like that would be dope. Mm, we'll see. Maybe we'll see that someday. Uh, all right, let's see. We got a fan tweet from Good Cop, Bad Cop. He goes, and he does this to everybody on my podcast, so just so you know. Uh, with Alec Price being an anagram of clear epic, what match in your career was clearly the most epic? And it's probably going to be the one that we keep talking about. <laughs> I mean, me, the the best moment definitely was me winning the belt. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, like, my... It was epic getting to wrestle Eddie Edwards. Mm-hmm. Um, that was awesome. Like, I love Eddie Edwards. And, um, you know, the fact that he's a Kowalski guy. And, like, my trainer was trained by Kowalski. Like, the lineage. Like, I felt like it was, just, like, a big, big, big match. Because, like, I just had to prove myself. I wasn't going in there fighting, like... 
to prove like, oh, I'm not just another indie guy. I'm proving like, yo, the lineage is strong and good with me. You know right. what I mean? Right. Right. And I feel like we just we killed it in there. It was hot fire. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, that was probably like my most like epic. But like definitely tied for it is when I won this belt. Like this I had two great I had a lot of great moments this yeah. year. Like I'm very grateful for all the, the moments and all the opportunities I've had this year. So hopefully, you know, not hopefully twenty twenty two is gonna be a banger. It's gonna be the year of yeah. the prize, obviously, because I'm on hot fire right now and i'm gonna continue <laughs> to be on hot fire i'm gonna be winning more belts belt collector belt around my another neck belt around my waist belt around my shoes it don't matter even a chain if i want it you feel me <laughs> tripping in gold i like to call it like i love to i love to see it but you're right i like i said you've had such a great 2021 like come on like blake christian comes <laughs> back into the indies and you're his second match and it's like this is nuts like you guys again like every match that like i watch like i'm I'm, and i'm gonna bring this up too like i'm waiting for chris bay your match with chris bay to come up on iw tv because i've been looking i've been looking forward to this and i'm like oh this is this is great like so how is it also too like here's blake christian who's hot in the indies got signed okay now he's got all this amazing uh training also and now he's back in the indies for you guys so like how is that experience for you um i'm sorry about the no you're good (laughs) um but um no the the experience was awesome blake christian is my dog cool really cool dude me and him put on a freaking great match. Um, it, it was just, it was dope. Like, I remember watching him on the indies, and he was hot when, like, I wasn't hot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, like, it's the same with Chris Bay. Like, those were two dudes that I wanted to face. Mm-hmm. But where I was in my career, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to face them. And then when they got signed, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to face them now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so, you know, to getting to face both of them. It, it's just it's just fire like and like i said we both i had bangers with both of them yeah. both of them are class acts they're they're dope guys they know their ring work and they're really freaking good there's a reason why they're signed you know what yeah I mean? yeah so i mean i learn I, I, every match i take from and i learn more yeah uh, to be honest I'm, a, I'm my own worst enemy after matches a lot of times because i want you know to be perfect i want everything to be on point and sometimes I don't, you know, I overthink things and I kind of like don't really see this, like the good stuff that I did. But those matches, I can 100% say like I was like ecstatic after. Like it was, they were fire. Yeah. Like I, I'm always taking from everything. I'm always trying to get better just to evolve because I'm never going to be perfect Alex Price. I'm always going to be imperfect. And the only way to get, the only way to get perfect but is by continuously improving of course of course definitely uh let me give more love in the chat i see you guys what's up captain dave how are you uh carl say that you should stay in boston no he should not stay in boston he's gotta come over here and wrestle over here more like i want i want to see him in like the new york new jersey more and i want to see him go everywhere like Yo. you're so talented uh west says colin are always enjoy loving um always love seeing you got you at magic Yes. So. They're, my, they're my peeps. What's good, Kyle and Wes? <laughs> good people. Uh, okay, so we're gonna move. We're gonna move on to the next question here. All right. So, uh, I love what I've been doing a lot. And I know I talked to you about this like off air or whatever. What I've been doing is I've been. There's so much negativity in wrestling, and nobody ever focuses on the positive. So I'm gonna focus on the positive. Um, and I love asking people, and we've had videos and you know there's a video on uh the indie wrestling corner pinned on there where we had a lot of wrestling positivity where a lot of wrestlers came on parents came on so if you guys didn't watch that video go go check it out it's really dear to my heart all the stories that i have heard from multiple people so i'd love to hear something that maybe has happened in your career whether it was maybe a fan has done something for you or like maybe you know maybe another wrestler's done so- something that sticks out in your brain that you could share with us that was such a like a moment for you um there's a lot mm-hmm. um 
it, it's crazy because I, I don't even feel like I've been in this business for five years. But it's like I've been in this business for five years. It's not a long time, but it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, you know half a freaking decade. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think me I think me like winning this belt, like you know I mean like me getting to meet my trainers, obviously. You know, when I was green as shit, getting to go on the road and pay my dues for big time wrestling, like going up and down the East Coast was amazing. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I've had so many moments in my career where I've had like, you know, people like be good to me because I'm not like a piece of shit and I'm always good to my people. Right. Um, and so I, I, you know, I, I, they know who they are, and I really appreciate everything that anybody's ever done for me, mm-hmm. whether it's give me advice or tell me how to do something else or even bitch at me. Like, I was a, I was a piece of shit cocky. Like, I wasn't cocky. It wasn't a piece of shit. It's just where I came from in my environment, I had to be cocky, and I had to, you know, go right to a fight. And if it wasn't for, like, mass old Mike McCarthy, like, checking me one day, like, I, I probably wouldn't be, like, where I'm at because I would still be a cocky piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there's just been a lot. I think that probably was like one of the moments that like stuck out. Like was like when Masshole checked me because I feel like my career went like a different direction that day. Mm-hmm. Just from an OG just checking it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and he wasn't being a dick. He right. wasn't like he was just like, dude, like shut the fuck up. You're, you're, you're so good. You're just so fucking cocky. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he, he kind of G-checked me real quick. Right. And I appreciate that. Yeah, that's true. That's why I like, I like asking these, you know, questions because there's things that fans and, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm a little blessed that, you know, working in podcasts, working behind the scenes a little bit, I get to see a little bit more. So it's nice to share those stories with fans that listen into this podcast. And, you know, I'm always pushing positivity. Um, Let's see. Uh, Eric wants to know what other belts does Alec want to win in 2022? Um, let's see. Let's see. I want all the smoke. <laughs> I want all the belts. I want every belt on the Indies. It doesn't matter. I want every belt on the East Coast, every belt on the West Coast, every belt in the North, the South, the, across the seas. The prize will be recognized. It doesn't matter. Like, I have my eyes set on everything. Like, I am the prize, but I have my eyes on the prize, and you're going to have your eyes on me. You feel me? There you go. Eric, you kind of walked yourself into that question. Um, Johnny wants to know. It's a dumb question. Like, (laughs) what belt would I want? I got one of the premier world championships right now on the indie scene in the United States. I'm going to get whatever the fuck I want. I feel it. Uh, Johnny says, do you think IWTV has helped fans on their streaming platform with Beyond Wrestling, Uncharted Territory, and Limitless give you the exposure help you get your fans and bookings? I mean, I feel like IWTV is great. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it definitely helps everybody with exposure. Like, it's one of, I think, not if not the biggest, like, wrestling library that's a streaming service right now Mm -hmm. biggest wrestling streaming service um there's just so much content and you know it gives you know promotions the availability to like put their content out there and have something like that where they can have all their stuff streamed and like somebody would have to go on youtube and like look for a video through a video through a video to find something when they can just go on iwtv for 10 bucks a month and get every type of wrestling there is all right, all right. Um, so I mean, I think IWTV is a wonderful, wonderful platform. I yeah. feel, feel like for the promoters and the wrestlers, yeah, because it just helps everyone out. It's a win-win. It, you know what I mean? Like we get our stuff out there. People in other countries can see our stuff. People in other states that, like you said, never seen me before, right. could be watching a show one day, and all of a sudden it's like, who is this kid walking up? Or like, who is this person? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it gives everyone that opportunity to get the eyes on them. It's just like social media. Absolutely. Like, wrestlers go on social media and blow up because they're, I know, reaching out to different audiences. And when you have IWTV, you're reaching out to all the different wrestling audiences. When you, you know, put wrestlers like that, they just turn into a show one day and all of a sudden they, they find their favorite wrestler. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That That's usually how it goes, you know? Like, it just, and then, and then social media, like you said, it's been great. 
as well. And then you got the fans that they post like clips and they make the you know the gifts watching IWTV. And then you got people like me actually at shows clipping and posting and tagging, which it's 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 wonderful. Everybody's important when it comes to wrestling. Uh, Prince in chat says I'd be all for Tank Tankman versus Price for the Freelance Underground Championship. <laughs> Oh, I think you muted. Did <laughs> you mute? <laughs> you should be good now. No, what happened? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he muted again. We were having this problem before. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> hit the hit the mute the 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 mic button and see if that helps it because it's on your end it's on your i can't hear you <laughs> he's having a hard day today <laughs> no <laughs> he's having one of those days What did you touch? <laughs> All right, we'll get him back. If anything, he'll, if anything, we'll close him out. We'll have him call, you know, call back into the thing. Let's see. All right, let's 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 go back to uh, let's go back to yeah, move on to like some call. of my questions, you know. So, um, okay, so what I do, what I do, definitely want to talk to you about is here let me let me record this too, just in case we're having any issues okay so i want to talk to you a little bit about you know the fans um you know one kind of cool thing and it's like shout out to my friend chris because i know last uh a couple days ago i think it was last week and i put this on the image for everybody to check out as well is like the 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 fan base are so freaking creative. You got people like me that do podcasts and we get to learn a little bit about you you know and then you got the fans that draw you which is which is nuts right yeah. like it's it's got to be like such a cool you know experience oh, no, it, to see it's that so fire. like I, I i can't like there's been a couple people that have drawn me so far like and they all do a great job i'm like so shocked i'm like god damn they got my likeness down to a t <laughs> even my nose you know what i mean so <laughs> that's that's so awesome like it's it's really it's really cool to see like shout out to all those people like have you had that too where you've had like the fans like they'll come and like they'll bring you like the drawings and like yeah for you like that people bring me drawings like um the main limitless sign guys my dude he always like makes signs for like the, the limitless shows mm -hmm. and i got like a couple of i got like two of my merch mm -hmm. my uh, t-shirts off of off of him because like the design is so good. <laughs> like he just does it all freehand, and he just comes up with like a, like hot fire. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's awesome. Like they, I I appreciate all the support that I get from my fans. Yeah, no, nah, it's my OGs because they ain't busters. They know <laughs> they know who real G is. Yes, yes. So and it's like support your favorite independent wrestlers, man. Like buy merch, buy you know, like me. I'm a pin girl. I love pins. Uh, you know, like buy buy the stuff. So and then you know we'll get into that a little bit later for for the fans if uh you know if, if they want to buy and uh, support you and all that fun stuff. So um. You know, so I like I like asking this question because it's always a fun question. You never know what comes out of people's mouths. So give us one of your best road trip stories because you travel a lot. So I'm sure you have some of those like funny moments that stick out to you that you could share with us. Um, a couple months, uh, not a couple months. I think the last Magic show. Um, we. <laughs> Uh, me, MSP, and like uh, the star car, we were driving down to uh, it's me, MSP, and AC. We were driving down to um, what is it called? Um, Pro Wrestling Magic, mm -hmm. and like Jossie's car, his wheel almost fell off. Mm -hmm. Like, for some reason, like there was like legit only two bolts left on it. Left, I think, like he said, he got his, his like the bolts on it changed and they didn't tighten them tight enough. So, we're on the highway and we heard this noise. And we're like, what is going on? We pull over and the, the tire is legit like that. Like oh, it was about to fall off. Like we could have died. Um, so we like couldn't go to Magic, which was horrible because we legit like well, all were on a legit yeah. like an hour and a half, an hour, 45 away from the show. Like we're legit on our way. And uh, we had to get a hotel room. 
and go get the parts and all that. So Jossie went all and got the parts, and then we went downstairs. We're about to get the thing fixed, and all of a sudden it starts raining, and we can't do anything. We're like, fuck. So we went back upstairs, and we're all in the hotel room. And I remember, like, like I think, like, Danger Kid came over, and he just chopped me. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden we were like, let's go, motherfucker. And then we all just started, like, legit wrestling. Like, we had, like, a fatal four-way in this hotel room, slamming each other around. Like, I was doing, like, <laughs> I was doing, like, freaking uh, German suplexes on the and roll, and roll freaking code breakers, and AC was powerbombing me and choke slammed me, and all of a sudden we got a knock on the door, and it's a, a noise complaint. Like, <laughs> oh, jeez. Because <laughs> we were just, all of us were just, we had the music, we had, like, the TV up, and we were just all in there, like, fighting. But we were tossing each other around on this bed. Like, I was hitting burning hammers and all that. Aggro ended up getting involved because he was he was the adult until he was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, he started he started fighting, too. So it was a dope little time. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> well, thank God you guys are good. Um... Yeah, no. no yeah, thank God I'm good. You I, know what I, mean? I saw that, that photo on... Uh... And I almost came to that show, and then so I got caught up doing something else, and I wanted to come, and I wanted to come see you, and then I'm like, oh, I was like, well, I'm kind of glad. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I would have been mad. I was like, I would have been really upset. Um, but so, what are some things that you like to do when you're not in the squared circle? Um, I work. I wrestle. I like to work out. Play video games sometimes. Watch com- uh, like read comic books, and like watch like a, like adult animation, like Family Guy, South Park, Inside Job, Futurama, all of them. Oh, so um, for the fans that that want to know, like, are you a PS guy or are you an Xbox guy? Uh, I mean, I'm a little bit of both. Like, it, it's like when I was younger, I grew up on Xbox. So we had a PS2, but then we got a 360. Uh, then we got an Xbox, the original Xbox, and then we got a 360. Mm-hmm. And then I end up getting, I think I have like a PS4 right now, like the Slim, the PS4 Pro Slim. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I like it a lot. I think Xbox more of a, a family console now. Like PS4 is more of like a gaming console. Mm-hmm. But I'm down for both. Like it, they both do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, like I can, I can both, I can play video games off of both, so I don't care. Yeah, uh, Johnny in the chat says I like to see Alec Price take on Alex Zane. Oh my god! Like, yes, what are you I'm guys? That, what are you that. guys trying to do to me? Like, God, like all these, like all my favorite wrestlers. What are you doing to me? Uh, Chad's in the chat. He goes hi. Uh, Eric says, is he a Marvel or DC guy? Oh. I'm a, I'm kind of mutual. I mean, I like uh, uh, I, I'm a big Wolverine fan, no cap, and like a Hulk fan. I mean, I'm more of a Marvel Marvel man, but I like certain people in DC. Like, I I definitely like like the Joker. I like the Joker. Deathstroke's my favorite villain of all time because mm-hmm. like Deathstroke's awesome. Like, if anybody says otherwise, like I do not believe you. You're wrong. You're a busta. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I like both of them. I'm definitely more of a Marvel man because I like, you know, Wolverine and like, um, the Hulk, mm-hmm. the Hulk has some dope ass stories to him. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man too. I love it. I love it. All right. So, you know, we're talking, we're so close to 2022. Do, do you have like, or I should say, what are some of your goals? of 2022 maybe it's like somewhere you want to go i mean clearly we want to like you know put all damn belts on you that's a given you know but like what are some of your goals for next year um for 2022 i want to have the best year i possibly can have i want to be i want to start going out of new england going to different territories Mm -hmm. um or i want to get signed um it's I think it's going to be like either or like either I'm going to stay on the indies and be super hot fire and um, continue to, you know, build off this momentum that I built in 2022 or 2021 and uh, just go on to 2022 like with the head of steam and just keep freaking killing it and going to every territory and wrestling any place that I need to go and start going to other countries. Um, but I, I definitely want to get I want to start getting looked at like I want to start getting I want to get signed soon. Um just because that's what I this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. It's not even about money. It's just like I want this to be my job. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, if it comes now, if it comes later, everyone's role's different. I'm, I'm going to stay humble, keep putting in my hard work, and when it happens, it happens. So, yeah. but I think 2020, 2022 is definitely the year of the prize. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Uh, Chad wants to know, what kind of scary movies do you like? Depending on, like, what type... Like, there's different type of scary movies, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you like the bad ones? Like the real, real bad ones? Like I was just having a conversation with a bunch of wrestlers the other day. We were talking about the really cheesy, scary movies. I, I don't really know. Like cheesy, scary movies, I'm kind of just like, eh. But like the like uh, like the bad ones, like I, I, I'm more of a comedy fan. Like I, or like sci, like kind of like sci-fi, like like magic or shit like that like so i mean when it comes down to like horror like i like watching horror but i'm not like a super big horror fan mm -hmm. um i mean if i probably have to go with one eh, i mean i like the conjurings they're, they're dope okay or like uh i don't know if i don't know if uh signs the, the alien movie with mel gibson like technically is a thing mm -hmm. technically is a um yeah scary movie but that was a good movie too yeah like uh, i really like that one i don't know oh you want you want to laugh at like a really scary bad one look up um killer pinata like this killer pin pinata <laughs> it's such a bad movie that it's so it's one of those like wrecks that it's like what am i watching but i need to continue to watch it kind of things yeah, that no, it's like a see i like stuff like that like those... <laughs> That, like that's funny as shit. <laughs> that was, we were just talking about this the other day with me and a bunch of wrestlers that we were sending videos to each other. I think there was a killer tree. I forgot what it's called. Tree Venge. <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's like eleven minutes tree long. Venge. Tree Venge. I like the the tree is pissed because the the family came and chopped the other trees, the family trees next to them or whatever. And then like yes. they come back to the house and he's like mad that he took the trees. And then he comes and he like he he sets the house on fire. Like it's just so bad. <laughs> So it's a train wreck, but it's so good. Like, <laughs> so um, April's dying in the chat at me because we watched a bunch of these like B movies, as as we, we call them. But yeah, so if you wanna you wanna laugh, definitely go check those freaking shitty movies out. They're so good. If uh, I do have to say, probably like definitely Leprechaun. I like the Leprechaun series. Okay, okay, that's good. Um, even Leprechauns in the Hood. <laughs> Oh man! Oh no! April said the ginger dead man. That was bad. Oh my <laughs> god! Jesus! We could we could go on and on and on about these like horrible movies. So, uh, so I have one final question for you. Then we'll get into what you got coming up. If you guys got any questions, please feel free drop them in the chat. Um, you know. So now that now that uh, you know, I like I like I like ending my my podcasts like this. You know, because there are always inspiring there's amateur wrestlers out there there's people that want to get into the business you know like all this what's a piece of advice that you would give those people uh stay humble and get ready to eat shit um i think that in this business if as long as you stick it out and show that you can hang and show that you're um you're not just one of those people that are marks trying to get in or just try to be there for a couple of weeks. Like there's a lot of people that will go to wrestling school thinking they want to be wrestlers and um, they'll be there for a couple months and then get on a show and leave. There's people that will go on their first road trip and realize this is not for me and dip. If you really want to do this, stick around, continue to work hard, pay your dues and like, just always remain humble, go to shows like, even if you're a name, help out with the ring, help out with the thing. Always make sure that everything's good because at the end of the day, like, it's all you can do. Right. And um, it's all about you and your word and who you are as a person. Are you real or you fake? Um, and just just work hard and continue to go. Like, I ain't anywhere. Like, I, I, I still got goals. I ain't nothing compared to what I want to be and what I know I can be. So just always evolve and just always keep, continue to work hard, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's great. 
It's great advice um, for all those people. I know like we have a lot of fans that either just started training or want to get into it. And a lot of them ask me or they'll tweet at me or they'll come into the chat. So I like getting your guys perspective for them. So, um, so yeah, let's talk about what's coming up. You are a busy man. We got a lot. We got a lot of posters. I got a lot of posters up here. New Year's like you busy. You busy. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. <laughs> so definitely, like I said, I will be up um, for New Year's. I think I'm going to do a, a vlog for the channel, guys, so you can see it. So um, I don't know. Maybe Alec will come and get in my face and tell me that, you know, I got to pay him again to follow him on Twitter. But <laughs> 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 So definitely check out check out that stuff. Definitely check him out. Like action and uh, limitless. Then you know we have the the, the grind and like there's some. Grind, I'm, bro. I'm, oh my god! Everywhere, come on, like magic. I was at JCW the other day. Yeah. Like sooner or later, I'm gonna be everywhere. Yeah. Check me out. Social like every match that I got yeah. coming up is gonna be hot fire. 2021 is ending in a bang, and 2022 is starting off with a championship retain. Like, I'm taking this home in Worcester. Wrestle Festival is going to be my time. It's mine. J.D. Drake ain't getting that. Follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter. It's the same handle. It's the Price City OG. If you're not following me, I don't even know why you're watching this. I mean, obviously, you're watching it because she's a great, you know, she does great Thank at podcasting. You. But you need to follow me. Yes. You need to follow this podcast. Thank you. you need to follow everything. If you ain't doing it, you a buster. That's it. <laughs> and Snapchat's only for the woes, so you can't get that. <laughs> um, all those links are in the description if you guys want to follow him. His merch is in there, too. Definitely go and support. I'm telling you, if you guys know me by now, like, you guys know I have an eye. I've been talking about Alec for a long time time so i'm very like i'm so grateful that you came on here chat with me like i i'm so glad that i got to see you finally in person because i just kept missing you and <laughs> it just was like making me mad like i think the last iwtv show that was at h2 i was so pissed i'm like why i was like what i'm always at h2o building and i was like why am i not that was so mad i was like i just i just keep missing you so i'm i'm very glad that we got to meet um Sundays. Well, so. yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that we got to meet. Thank yeah. you for the support and, you know, thank you for letting me come on and Absolutely. tell my story and, you know, yes. introduce me to some people that's never met me before. Yes. So what's good, guys? Go thank you for follow. listening. Go Make follow. sure you follow her podcast. Thank you. She's great. You're, you're, Fantastic. you're sweet. I have one more like match that I didn't bring up because I just bought tickets literally before this podcast was Invictus. Uh, I love Invictus. I've been Invictus before. Uh, this is your debut too, right? This is your... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're wrestling the good friend of this podcast, Big Game Leroy. So I'm excited. I'm going to be front row for this too. Like as long as nothing gets shut down again. Um, oh yeah, that's another belt coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that, Leroy? That's me coming for your gold, son. Oh my God. I'm just going to sit in the front. <laughs> I'm really excited for this match. You don't understand. Like, Leroy's been on this channel a couple of times. I love you, Leroy. Um, I'm just going to shut my mouth because <laughs> it's like I'm going to get myself in trouble with one of you guys. Yeah, I, am not, I, am, I am team both on this, okay? Like, Come on. You know CB is team prize. Stop lying. <laughs> like, I won't, I won't tell Leroy. It's fine. I'm dead. I'm dead. No, but but I, I love it. I, I can't wait to, you know, for all these shows. So guys, definitely go go support. Go say hi to him. Again, if you go to some of the shows, if you're new, definitely go follow him. Go check out some of the matches we talked about today. It's, you know, he's great. So with that being said, guys, thank you for bearing with us with uh, some technical difficulties. I just, <laughs> I hate Skype and all that other shit. But, like, here we are. So, um but yeah, so guys, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to all that fun shit. Follow me again tomorrow. Nick Gron's coming from H2O, so we can talk to him about the Undiscovered Championship belt. Next week, MSP's coming on, so hey. we're going to talk to them a little bit. So, But for now, guys, stay safe, support independent wrestling, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Be easy.